Well, for um, for hundreds of years, uh, startups were built on the sort of build it and they will come theory. I lock myself, I'm an entrepreneur with an idea, I lock myself in a room, I build it, I build it, I build it, and when it's all done, I put it out for sale, and only then do I find out that the customers aren't interested, or it's too complicated, or it has the wrong features, or it costs too much. Not a great way to build a startup successfully, in, particularly in an economy like we face you know, in the world today. And so having uh, experienced this through his life in eight startups, Steve Blank, uh, really at the turn of the century, said, I think there's a better way to do this. And he developed the concept of customer development. And the sort of fundamental difference, and whether you call it lean startup or customer development, they are fundamentally the same. And they both focus on two key principles. The first is that at a, on the first day of its life, a startup, whether it's inside a big company or three 25-year-olds in a garage, uh, on the first day of its life, a startup doesn't know any, doesn't have any customers. So how could it know what they're thinking, what their needs are, what products they would need, or what features and functions those products should have. And so customer development proposes that at the same time as you start building your product with your sort of tech team, you start getting feedback from customers about what they want, what they don't want, what their problems are, what their needs are, what they're willing to pay, where they want to perhaps buy the product. And you're constantly forcing that learning down into the product and into the business model. So that as you march through this process and you get over here, when you finish the product, you know where to sell it, what to charge for it, how to explain it, who the customers are going to be, how you're going to acquire them. And what it does is it allows you to get many, but by no means all, of the mistakes out of your business before you've spent a great deal of money and, more importantly, before you've launched the business. It encourages you to fail quickly, to find things that don't work in your product or service, and to fix them in very small, you know, when you're still operating in very small scale in early product development rather than to wait until you've launched or until you um, uh, have spent a great deal of money. Um, well, it, it, I, it takes a good deal of courage and it takes a great deal of hard work that everyone seems to forget. But I think the thing that we also love to forget is that 96, 97% of all scalable startups fail. So better to find the failure points early before you've spent all the money, designed and built and launched the product. Find the failure points as early as you can. Remove as much of the risk from the business as you can in sort of small, inexpensive experiments. And hopefully the end result is a, a better, better than 97% failure rate. There is still no magic potion or wand that uh, makes all these startups work. But your job as a founder is to remove as much of the risk as you can. And the way you do that is by doing things, acknowledging that they don't work, finding alternatives, and then testing those. The best way uh, to use the process in a business school is to actually, as uh, Nike would say, just do it. Um, I teach a 10-week program called Lean Launchpad at Columbia Business School. 50 students come in on the first day. In the, they are in teams of three, four, five students. And they come in with a team and an idea. 
and the idea can be written, is often written on a cocktail napkin with beer stains on it, and we force it into the business model canvas, and every week the students get out of the building and test components of their business model, find the failure points, revise the business model, and they do this over about 10 or 12 weeks, depending on which uh, term it is. And what comes out at the end is a often a you know proven um, business. In some cases, uh, the best example I've ever had was actually in uh, Colombia, in Latin America, not Colombia in New York City, where we started with 25 startup teams, and at the end of eight weeks. Eight of those teams had customer revenue. One of them had a $50,000 purchase order for their enterprise software. Normally, you spend eight weeks writing the damn business plan. This way, you make bring the business to life as quickly as you can, as uh, roughly, as easily as you can, without all the features and functions, without all the you know, fine points, and you expose it to customers, get their feedback on how to make it better, stronger, different, more appealing to the customers, and uh, keep evolving the business uh, as you go, hopefully taking some orders along the way, which is the best sort of way to learn.